Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise this morning. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. going to be taking our scripture before our communion and talking about where Paul said, I declare unto you the gospel. I declare unto you the gospel. We're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 15. Starting with verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved. Aren't you glad you're saved? If you know Jesus this morning, shout amen. amen. Aren't you glad you know him? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which also received, you also, I also received. In other words, he said, I delivered what I received and I gave it to you. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas, that's Simon Peter, then of the twelve, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, that but some, it says, are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James. This was his brother, James. Then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also. This is the apostle Paul as of one born of due, out of due time. This morning, I just want to talk about the gospel in a nutshell that Paul just talked about. He says, I'm going to give you in a very concise, in a nutshell, he might would say if he knew that cliche, the gospel. I'm just going to talk about the gospel and remind you about the gospel. Let's make our confession would you just lift up your word, if it's on your program, um, on your uh, electronic device, or if you've got the old-fashioned Bible in your hand, just lift it up. Let's make our confession. I will believe God's Word. I will be what it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted, Amen. You may be seated today. It's important that we know the power of God's Word. It declares everything to us that we need to know about salvation. And the Bible tells us that Paul was writing back to Christians. And he was telling them, I delivered the gospel to you. I told you about how Jesus came, was crucified on a cross was buried, and in three days he rose again. He says, but I want to remind you, lest you forget, because it's important that you don't forget. Simon Peter said this in 2 Peter 1, Yea, I think it meet, or he says, I think it important. As long as I am in this tabernacle, it means he, as long as I am alive, and this, he's talking about his body, as long as I'm alive, I think it's important to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So, Holy Week started Sunday with Palm Sunday. And you've probably heard the story over and over and over again. Even the History Channel had the Bible on. And it was just repeat after repeat after repeat. Had Jesus on there and they were acting out His life, His death, and His burial and resurrection. Even Charlton Heston is still the best Moses that I have ever seen alive. Now I know you can't beat the real Moses, but Charlton was, was, a, was a powerful Moses. You know, and um, the, uh, the guy that uh, played uh, 
Herod, I'm not Herod, but uh, the Egyptian king, uh, Ramses, Yul Brenner, all of those guys are gone, but, but they're still declaring during Holy Week the Bible and the Word of God. And so you hear it over and over and over. Why is that necessary? Why do we need movies written like the Christ? I had to hide my eyes when I went to see that movie. It was so dramatic. It was so hard. Anybody saw that movie? And um, I said, man, this is, a, this, is, this is tearing me up. And Rachel said, yeah, but can you imagine? It's probably worse than what they could portray on there. Now, Jim Caviezel was a powerful Jesus, but he ain't Jesus. And the new Jesus they got that's doing all the praying. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the guys that was with him, I, I can't remember, I think it was Mark Walburn. He was on there and he says, I've got Jesus with me, so why don't we pray? And the actor that plays Jesus in the... Um, uh, the chosen, I think it is. He says, look, I ain't Jesus, but we can pray. How, how many know today you can pray? And we're thanking God that people are calling people back to prayer because this year God has called us more of Jesus, church, you know it, less of ourselves. More of Jesus, less of me. And the way we get more of Jesus is being reminded and preach the gospel. And so this is what Paul was doing. He wanted the Corinthians to have more of Jesus. So the way to get more of Jesus is not to forget the gospel. What he did on Calvary, what he did on the cross, what he did when he was buried in the tomb, and what he did when he rose again and ascended to the Father, and he sent back the promise of the Holy Ghost. So remembering is powerful. So this week, has been a week of remembering the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, over and over again. And today, Holy Week ends with the resurrection. Praise God. The celebration of everything Jesus did, and He rose again to perform all the promises of God that He has written in His Word. The Bible tells us the will of God. It's like a will. And Hebrews goes through the law and talks about how it is important for the one who writes the will to first, before the will is enacted, to pass. And after he passes, then there's an executor and they enforce the words of the will. How many know God didn't leave it up to nobody else? to rise again or to come back as executor. Jesus died in order for His own will and His own promises could be enforced in our life. And then He rose again on Easter to be the executor of His own will so that He carries everything out in His name. And so today, whatever you need in your life, whatever promise you need God to fulfill for you. In His Word, Jesus rose again to execute the will of God and the promises of God for you that He has written in His Word. How many is glad of that today? Come on, give Him praise. He's alive to enforce God's will in our life, to bring it to pass. So, Paul starts out by saying, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. He says, I've already told you this, but I'm, I'm going to tell you again. He says, Which also you have received, and wherein you stand. He says, I preached it and you received it, but I want you to remember it. The easy to read version says this, That good news, the message you heard from me, is God's way to save you. But you must continue believing it. If you don't, you believe for nothing. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to remember the good news I told you. So it's important for us to continually be reminded. How many has a bad memory? I'm going to raise both hands on that. Both sides of my brain are bad and when it comes to memory. A few other things too. I have a bad memory, so I have to be reminded I, I try to put reminders on my phone. 
And sometimes I forget to look at my reminders that I have put on my phone. I told Jonathan a while ago, I said, Jonathan, I need a little bug. He said, you need one of those radios you put in your ear to remind you of your own order of service. You get an order of service and you forget what you put on there. I even print it out. And I got scribble where I've changed it. I can't even read my own order. How many has ever done that? You made a, a, a list to go to the grocery store and you scratch things out and change it and you come home, you had it on a list, got home and said, I declared in my name I forgot to get eggs. Or I, or I forgot to get uh, something from the store. That is why we have to be reminded and we're that way about the gospel. Remember the gospel, he says. Don't forget it. Because it's important that you remember it so it can be activated in your life. How many know that faith is what activates the promises of God in your life? It's whereby you are saved through faith. It's not by works, but it is by the grace of God. But it is what? Through your faith. Through faith. So you have to remember the grace of God to have faith faith in it. So we're reminded over and over and over again this week about believing what the gospel has declared. And this is what he says. At this period of time, history tells us Christians were being persecuted by the thousands. And history tells us that they were being drug off to prison. They were losing their jobs. The church grew when they first had revival and the gospel was preached. Like in Ephesus, the church of Ephesus where Timothy was pastor. They say there was probably more than 20,000 people that went to that church. But you read Ephesians. The first letter was written in a good time. It was written when the church was thriving. People were coming in. The second uh, uh, rather Timothy, 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy was written, he wrote Ephesians, but he wrote to Timothy in Timothy 1 and 2. The first part of Timothy, the first letter, was written during a happy time. Everything was good. People were being saved. Church was thriving. Finances were good. They were being able to pay their bills. Everything was great. And then 2 Timothy come, persecution had hit. People were leaving out the back door as fast as they came in the front door of the church. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? I mean, we've seen kind of that happen through COVID and all these things. And it's kind of hard to get people back in church. But let me tell you something. It ain't nothing but the attack of hell. It's just the attack of hell. And persecution comes in a lot of ways. And these people were persecuted. And they were persecuted relentlessly. And so Paul said, look, Sometimes because things go bad, sometimes because things get good. People forget. They forget the story of Jesus. They forget He died on the cross for their sins, and there's no sin too bad that His blood cannot purge away. Can you shout amen for that? Oh, praise the Lord. He shed His blood so that we might be redeemed. And when we pray, the blood covers it all. The blood washes your sins and my sins away. And when it happens, it's gone. It's done. Don't forget that. That's part of the gospel. We need to preach the gospel of the forgiveness of sins. We need to preach the gospel is that there's no history on God's record of your sins when the blood is applied. That makes me happy this morning. I could shout glory because that is important for us to remember and we need to hear it over and over again because you know what else we hear? The devil on our shoulders said, you remember when you did this? You remember how low you were? How low can you go? Everybody's been low in life. Everybody's done things they're ashamed of. And the devil will remind us, all right? So we need to be reminded, the blood has covered it. When you pray, it's done. When you ask God's blood to be applied, it's washed. I want to tell you, it's not like my detergent. I got some shirts, you know, I wash my own clothes. It's not because Sister Rigney can't wash. I'm just trying to take a load off of her. So I wash my own clothes. And so I've learned how to use spray and wash and stains. And, you know, there's some tough stains. You have to spray it. And if you don't do it just right, I've kind of found, Brother Ricky, I've kind of found out how to make it better. I've found out that if you'll spray it and then scrub it, 
and then go to the, and, and, and I know I make a mess when I do this, go to the sink and then run water through it and then spray it and wash it again. And I, sometimes I don't go, I say, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to go through that process to get this stubborn stain out. So I throw it in there, I get it out of the dryer and all I've done is sealed it in. There, I can see the big old stain. I should have went through the process. That's not the blood of Jesus. When he washes it, it is gone. There's not even a ring where it was. And that's your life when it's under the blood. Can you give Jesus blood? A praise this morning. The blood will never lose its power. Shout amen. I've been watching John Hagee, so praise the Lord. You better watch out this morning. This was a terrible time, and they needed to hear that God forgives and God can help you through hard times and difficult times and times of persecution that weighs on your faith and that is tempting to, to just give it up and, and to forget about it and, and put God out of your life. But I want to tell you, he said, you need to be reminded so that it can be reactivated in your life. And this is what he said, I gave you the message that I received. I love this about Paul. I love this because he's not telling you something he didn't know about. He's telling you something that worked in his life. He's telling you about Jesus who did it for him. Now, have you read about this man? Have you read how mean he was? This guy was a terrorist. This guy used to be called Saul of Tarsus. One of the most feared titles, the most feared name among Christendom during his time. He put men and women in prison. He had them stoned and executed because he was so mean, just simply because they were Christians. So he's not talking to you about, you know, I grew up and, and man, I knew it all and, and I was close to the Lord all my life. And No, he's not talking from that standpoint. He's talking to you about, you know, I killed Christians. I drug innocent men and women into prison and had them locked up just simply because they loved Jesus until one day Jesus met me on the road to Damascus and I was introduced to Him and He called me into this ministry. I'm not telling you something that don't work. I've used it to, and it works. Jesus saves and He changes our lives. And this is what He is saying. I'm talking about a gospel that changed my life. There was a salesman. He was a vacuum cleaner salesman. Now, if you're a vacuum cleaner salesman, these were days when they went house to house. And he tried to sell me a vacuum cleaner, and I said, well, do you have it? Well, no, I don't have this one. So he was trying to sell me something that he didn't even use himself. He didn't even really know about himself. They just said I didn't buy it, not because it was not a nice vacuum cleaner. I was poor back then. I didn't have no money. Anybody been there before? And so I didn't buy something that he didn't have. Paul said, look, I'm not preaching a gospel that I have not needed in my life it's changed my life. And if you know how low down and disgusting my life was and how you see me now alive and preaching this wonderful gospel that has delivered my soul from a devil's hell, you'll understand that I've received this and it changed my life and I'm just giving you the Word that changed my life. And so I believe our world is hungry for lives who have experienced God and they know what they're talking about. And they can tell a person that is down. They're in the bondage of sin. They're in the bondage of hopelessness. Jesus rose again so that we could have the gospel, a gospel that He is enforcing in our life that changes our life so that we could tell somebody else He did it for me. He can do it for you. He'll do it for you. I know He will because He did it for me. And He says, I just delivered what happened to my life. I gave you the message I received that turned my life on. I told you the most important truth. There it is. 
the most important truth. Christ died for our sins. I mean, if you're, if you're arg- arguing over some of the points in the Bible, and that's, your, that's what's sticking you, let me just tell you the most important truth this morning. Paul said it. Christ died for our sins. <laughs> he died for our sins. As the Scripture says. And He was buried and was raised to life on the third day as the Scriptures say. And that He appeared to Peter, that was Cephas in the King James, and then to the twelve apostles. After that, Christ appeared to more than 500 witnesses. He appeared to 500. It wasn't just the guys that hung out with him, those apostles or disciples that he hung out with all the time. It was other disciples that witnessed his resurrection that he met with. And he says, most, Paul said, are still living that day. He said they were still alive in his day. He had talked to them probably. He had listened to their witness. But some have died. Then he appeared to James and later to all the apostles, and finally to me, James. The Bible says, Jesus' brethren, Jesus' family, other than Mary, they didn't even believe Him. They didn't even believe Him. He went to the cross, they didn't believe Him. He was buried, they didn't believe Him. But when He rose, (laughs) when He come up out of that grave, Like the kid said, I ran out of that grave. When he came up out of the tomb, the Bible said he went to old brother James. He went to that mean old brother that he had to put up with in the house that he was raised around that probably picked on him. You think you God's son. I can, you know, brothers can be tough. I had an older brother. Has anybody in the house ever experienced an older sibling in your life. There's a few of you. Man, all you guys, the, y'all, y'all firstborn? Every one of y'all are mean. Bless God, you need the blood of Jesus. How many middle kids we got? Now, babies don't count. Babies are all in a world all their self. All right? Middle kid. I'm telling you, it was hard sometimes to have an older brother. Mean older brother, three years older. Just treating your wrong Doing you bad, being mean to me. That's what Levi will say. He comes to me, people at y'all being mean to me. I said, I know how you feel, brother. I know how you feel. Jesus knew how you feel, Levi, to have an older brother or a brother that was mean to you. Here he is, Messiah. Some say he was the oldest from Joseph's side. They believe that he was, his wife had passed. There's a lot of speculation on that, but James was in the house and didn't believe Jesus. James was in the house and didn't believe Jesus. Half brother. And he appears after he comes out of the grave, shows himself alive after his crucifixion. And that old mean brother said, I can't believe that my brother is God. (laughs) He's God in the, He's a son of God. I mean to tell you, you know, my first, my first inkling was, oh man, I got a beeline to God now. I mean, I got a straight. But you know what? Everybody does who puts trust in Jesus' name. It's not just James. He said, my brother is God in the flesh. <laughs> He's a son of the living God. He's the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. And he started preaching. Do you know that old mean brother grew up to be the pastor of the church at Jerusalem? And they tell us he died a martyr's death. They threw him off the pentacle of the temple or the uh, high place in the area. They got so tired of him talking about Jesus and the gospel and the blood. They just threw him off. And, And the book of martyrs say that it didn't kill him. 
So they took a club and finished him off. How's a mean old brother live for God and willing to give his life to something he didn't believe in the first place in the beginning? Do you know what changed him? The resurrection of Jesus changed his life. And I want to tell you, Jesus rose so that he could change our life. This morning, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to have communion. And if you don't know him today, if you haven't accepted him, or if you're having some problems in your life, getting past some things, remember what the Bible says about his blood. Remember what the Bible says about forgiveness. Remember what the Bible says about salvation. Don't forget the gospel because it's the gospel that saves our life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the gospel. Thank you that we can declare the gospel. I pray, Lord God, that if there's somebody today that don't know you, Jesus, have not met you, has not accepted you. Or maybe they've strayed. They're a prodigal today. They used to know you, but they've strayed away. Lord, like the prodigal, let them come to themselves, come back to you, because you're here for us. You'll never leave us. You'll never turn us away. If anybody comes to you, you'll know why it's cast them out. No matter what we've done, your blood covers it all. All we've got to do is put our trust in you, and it's done. God, thank you for this. If there's anybody in this building today, while we're, our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, you say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. Would you just slip up your hand? Say, I need him. Pastor, I really need him. I'm going through some things, and I need him to help me. I need him to work in my life. I need him to do a work in me, my house, my family, my marriage. I need him to do a work. God bless you. Thank you, Lord God, for letting us be here today. And God, we just thank you for this communion meal that we're going to share on this Resurrection Sunday. And I want to give thanks for the body represented by the bread and the blood, represented by the juice we're going to partake of in this communion meal. We ask God that you just forgive us of our sins, make us worthy to receive this communion we're going to share together in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. If you would reach and get your elements that we've provided, The scripture says, the scripture says, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Jesus? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one, one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. So it calls the cup of, ble- of the Lord here, the cup of blessing, the body of blessing that we break. We're asking God to make it the meal that heals today, that it heals us, body, soul, and spirit. 1 Corinthians 11 says, The Lord, the Lord Jesus, The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. The first thing he did was he took the bread, he gave thanks, and we've given thanks, and he broke it. Break the bread together. 
And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And take the cup. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm going to have to ask for them to put a little more juice in this cup next time. Because the body is not going down real good. <laughs> Lord. Let's all stand all over the building. Make a note of that. Bigger cups. Would you stretch your hand this way for the blessing this morning? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And everybody shouted, Amen. Happy Easter. Have a great day with your family today.